know, we're just going to start out some basic questions. Absolutely. Um, first, just get to know you and then we'll go into why we're here and we'll talk, kind of talk about the tools and stuff that you have 35. So, Sounds good. Uh, cool. So, um, first things first, who are you, sir? I'm Lieutenant Chris Karapostolis. Um, from uh, Pax River, I'm a test pilot at Pax River. I'm uh, originally a Legacy Hornet guy, uh, flying F-18 Charlie. And I went to test pilot school and now I'm stationed at Pax River in VX-23, doing developmental flight tests on the F-35. And how long have you been at Pax River? I've been at Pax River um, for approximately three years, a year at test pilot school and two years with F-35 program. Now, did they just put you right into the F-35 program? I, I, I did, yeah, I'm one of the first, they call us uh, for, first tour test guys, so I'm uh, one of the one of the guys that came straight out of test pilot school and got to go straight to F-35. Now, testing the F-35 and getting to this point, what's, what's the pass look like to get here? Uh, the pass, the past, um, so obviously uh, do well in school, so uh, they need, they want engineering majors and guys that, uh, you know, did well in school. Um, they're also looking for guys, a lot of boat and ship experience, so I've done uh, two deployments and a set of workups in my fleet squadron. Uh, in the F-18 and then looking for LSO, so just that lot of boat experience, uh, both from the LSO point of view and just flying aboard the carrier, um, and then do well in test pilot school and uh, you get to go to fly the F-35, I got to go fly the F-35, so. Now, why is the F-35 here today? Like, what, I guess, at what point of its test cycle are we at right now? Uh, so we're still in definitely the early phase of uh, the F-35's test pilot, um, program. We're still expanding the envelope so we're slowly expanding the capability of it being able to operate on and off the aircraft carrier. Fine. So we that study. <laughs> That's fine. Alright. Uh, do you want to the question? Or? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> so, um, where is the F-35 at, at this point of its testing process right now? Uh, so we're, we're finishing up. We're getting towards the, uh, the end of SDD system development and demonstration. So the early phase of testing, we're approving the capability aboard the aircraft carrier and just expanding the envelope of uh, being able to launch and recover aboard the aircraft carrier and just operate in the carrier environment. So you talked earlier about landing on the aircraft carrier with F-35. Can you elaborate a little bit more about the difference between the 18 and the 35 when it comes to especially the landing? Oh, absolutely. So uh, obviously the F-35 um, uh, is, is shaped different, has different geometry and different geometry constraints. Uh, one of the biggest things that makes the F-35 so nice to land aboard the aircraft carrier are the flight controls. We have integrated direct lift control, so uh, what that means is we move the control surfaces a lot more, and by doing so we take a lot of the workload away from the pilot and uh, therefore put it on the jet and are able to, to land um, a lot more consistently aboard the aircraft carrier with it. So it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier. It's it reduces pilot workload uh, uh, significantly uh, compared to legacy platforms. Uh, so the main thing we're looking to do out here, the big ticket items, obviously we're continuing to expand the, uh, the envelope, the different wind cells, so the min, uh, the recovery headwinds we're using, you know, um, crosswind components for both catapult launches and recoveries. Uh, big thing here is max power shots, so uh, all the afterburner launches, we did a couple of those this morning. Um, doing look to do some J-PALS work out here, the new uh, Joint uh, Precision Approach Landing System, and as well as night, there'll be some night flying that's going to take place uh, here in a few days. Uh, so those are the big ticket items. So the entire phase, there should be three DT events, and this is the second of, of the three events that we're on right now. Now, being kind of at the forefront of aviation, of aviation what's that like? Like, what's here? Uh, it's, it's really, really neat. I mean, you look at, uh, you know, I, I look at my, the Hornet, and, um, and, you know, you read all lessons learned, and you, you read the manual on it, and all these things, all the... Um, you know, notes, warnings, and cautions are stuff that were discovered and written by the early test pilots uh, that they gave us. And so that's kind of cool to be at that phase in a platform's history where we get to, to write the book on it, essentially, and how to operate around the carrier and the do's and don'ts that, um, you know, all the future naval aviators are going to going to read and adhere to and expand upon, um, kind of teach, you know, writing how to operate this aircraft around the, the boat. So. Now, as test pilot, doing that type of what not to do and uh, I would say it's probably not as dangerous as uh, as, as you would think, or as uh, the the stigma allows. Um, you know, we have a very 
if you haven't noticed too, the real the real muscle behind it out here, all the engineers that you see walking around the ship, you know, we have a lot of very talented individuals uh, engineering wise that put a lot of time and rigor into calculating and, and, and looking at and then doing analysis on all the test points we're going after. So nothing we've done on the ship hasn't been, you know, uh, gone through in the simulator, uh, done with, you know, a lot of engineering rigor and analysis got into it. We've also done it at the field. We have a full catapult and recovery facility up in Pax River. Um, so we go through all that testing and they come out here. You know, ideally we don't, we don't really find anything new. Um, and I have a lot of confidence in those guys and, and so it should be, it should be nothing surprising, which it hasn't been yet. So. Speaking specifically of the maintainers and the kind of plane, like, what does it take to set yourself to get the plane launched off the carrier? Um, I, I would say it's no, uh, I would say in this case right now, right now, it's no more than any other aircraft. You know, we still need uh, the ship, um, the ship team, um, very, very much so. So all the support we get from the ship, you know, um, everything to the guys working on the resting gear, to the catapults, um, and so forth. Uh, all the yellow shirts, and everyone on deck, the grapes, you know, everyone is is very critical in the mission of getting this aircraft off the ship. Uh, as far as something unique that comes with F-35, we do have a. Uh, I, um, a control room team, a bunch of engineers that are watching and monitoring all the different parameters of the jets uh, while we fly. But, but honestly, we, that, none of that would happen without all the guys working really hard on, on the flight deck and, and below decks as well. So. Now, I guess for moving ahead, what's next in, as we go into the next phase of like, the future of the um, So the, the next, uh, as far as for the carrier, the carrier suit uh, we're looking to do is um, so right now we're going to look through some flying with some internal stores, some weapons loaded inside, which should should be pretty transparent. Uh, the next big thing is we're looking on the next step to do a lot more night uh, cat in our night flying, and then uh, to look to put external stores on the wings as well. So. Uh, yes. So uh, being on the ice. So how do you feel about the the ice hosting hosting you guys? Oh, the Ike, is, the Ike has been a great host. This is a, this is a great ship, and it's really, uh, they've been more than welcoming, very accommodating uh, to some of the unique aspects of tests. You know, we're not, we're not the air wing. We do things a little bit, a little bit different, sometimes a little, uh, a little weird uh, to most people, but they have been more than accommodating, and they've been, you know, helped us out in every turn, um, every, everything from um, the chow to on deck to taxi, you know, to fly op, flight ops. Uh, it's been great to be on this ship, so. And speaking of this ship, Oh, I think I think that's perfect. You know, one, one of the one of the oldest one of the older ships in the Navy with the newest aircraft. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. And I, I think that age and uh, and side number has nothing to do with it. You know, the ship is obviously uh, very well maintained, has a rock star uh, crew, and it shows throughout the ship. So, I think age or the hull number it has nothing to do with it. So. <laughs> All right. And uh, is there anything else you want to add to the program? Or? Um. I'd say that you know the, the biggest thing uh, F F-35 you know is is the future. It's an awesome airplane. You start seeing on more and more flight decks uh, around here, and I think uh, you know I'm really excited to be a part of it, and I'm excited to uh, let all my my buddies start start flying it more and and get more involved and and get the maintainers involved too. So let the fleet start putting their their handprints on it and uh, and shape it. So I really it's really been a neat experience. Yeah. So it's awesome, but, yeah. but why, is it, why is it so great? Uh, well, the helmet, I think the, the, neat, the neatest thing about the helmet is just how much information is available um, and, you know, presented in front of you through the helmet. So uh, in all the aircraft where you'd have to look down, uh, you know, go head down, if you will, but the fact that you're able to look out through the canopy, maintain, you know, situational awareness to the carrier, to the aircraft and the pattern, but still have all the information you need provided to you uh, through that display is really neat. And then, you, you know, the fact that you can turn your head and uh, and see um, and still see the information is, is really is really cool as well. So yeah, the helmet you know it doesn't have a HUD like a legacy aircraft. All the information is presented us through the helmet, and uh, it's just amazing. Like I said, how much information is available there. So how much does that add to the tactical advantage? Sorry. I, how much does that how much does that add to the tactical advantage? Oh, uh, I know I've, I've actually uh, I'm working as a developmental tester. Uh, doing air vehicle stuff, so I haven't never actually flown this aircraft in a tactical situation, um, but I can, I can, yeah, I can't really comment on that. <laughs> All right. All right, that's
Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate thank it. Thank you, sir. Absolutely.